Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show one method of setting up a Proxmox backup server. So this isn't the only way, this isn't the be all end all way, this is just one way to set up a Proxmox server. In fact, there are multiple variations of what we're about to do that could work just as effectively as anything else out there. So hold on tight, we're gonna set up a Proxmox backup server right now. Now, I do want to mention there are, well, as I've already mentioned, there are lots of ways to do this. You could, if you wanted to, you know, use a use bare hardware, like this is an old uh, Latte Panda 432, just as a, a little single board computer that I could pl plug some hard drives into and uh, be good to go and run all my backups. That way uh, you could you could set up an old PC like I've got back here uh, on the shelf there, or like we're gonna do in this video, I'm actually going to be using a VM on my Synology device. So even though I'm using a VM on a Synology device, the process will be basically the same, whether you're doing it in a VM or on bare metal. So let's jump over to my desktop and take a look at what this looks like. Okay, so obviously the first place we wanna go is actually over to the Proxmox website, head over to their downloads page, and then look for their Proxmox backup server link or go right below it and we can see that version 2.2 is available. Click on the download button and it will do, well, it'll download like like, like it's supposed to, right? So uh, here we can see I've already got that downloaded right here and I've actually already moved it over to my ISOs folder on my Synology device. Now, this would be the equivalent of uh, burning this to a USB using something like Etcher or or, or uh, Rufus or something like that. Um, but once we get kind of past this point, we'll be, everybody will be on the same page, right? So let's jump over here to my Synology. I'm gonna come over here to the top left. I'm gonna go over here to Virtual Machine Manager. And then I'm going to uh, go to Virtual Machines. Uh, here you can see I've already got a Proxmox backup server right there up and running. It has been for a while, has been working very, very well. So uh, what we wanna do is click on Create. Uh, I'm going to select Linux here. I'm gonna go to Next. Uh, this is the, the storage where I want to, to put my stuff. Uh, my name, I'm just going to do uh, PVEBK for uh, Proxmox uh, Virtual Environment Backup. And then for CPUs, I'm gonna give it two cores and I'm gonna give it two gigs of RAM. And then I'm gonna select a VGA there. Um, of course, this would just be uh, dictating the hardware in your setup. So of course you may wanna do different hardware if you do a VM. Uh, you may not even have this process if you're using bare metal. So this part may not apply to you, but let's move on to the next step here where I'm going to uh, give myself some, some storage here. I'm gonna do 16 gigs for my boot drive, and then I'm gonna do 128 gigs uh, for my storage. Again, this is just for demonstrative purposes. Uh, if, if on my on my actual backup server, my, my storage uh, is a terabyte of storage, so I don't have to worry about filling that up anytime soon. So just a very basic uh, low-end Proxmox server in this uh, example here, but I'll go ahead and click on Next. Uh, I'm gonna select my network, will just be the default uh, VM network there and click next. Uh, my ISO for boot up, I'll click browse. Uh, I'll come over here to my ISOs folder and then I'll select my Proxmox backup 2.2-1 uh, and click select. Uh, my additional ISO file, I don't need to do anything there. Auto start, I'll just say yes, that's fine. Um, firmware, this is all fine, so I'll click next. Um, I'll, I'll allow my permissions and I'll click next. And I'm gonna say, go ahead and power this on when it's been created. So click done. So right here, we'll give this just a second. And when, once I'm able to click connect, I will. Okay, so we've got a couple of options here. Of course, we're gonna choose the basic option of install Proxmox backup server. Uh, so we'll just click in there and click enter. It'll load our installer here. Okay, so here we are on the EULA. Of course, read the EULA, agree to the EULA if you agree to it. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that right now. Um, and then we're going to uh, select our target hard disk. Uh, again, I've got two options here. I've got 16 gigs and 128 gigs. Uh, I'm gonna, of course gonna use the 16 gig storage there and click next. Uh, then I'll select my country and my time zone. Again, I'm close to Denver, so I'll select that and click next. Give it a password and an email address and then click next. Here we're gonna give it a fully qualified domain name, sort of. Uh, I'm just gonna call this, uh, just like I gave the, the name of the VM, uh, PVEBK like so, and then here we can see that we'll be on uh, 192.168.1.61, and then we'll be on a different port, but we'll come to that when we get to that point, right? So uh, now we can just go ahead and click over here on next. Oops, they're absolutely right, uh, dot, local. <laughs> Missed a step there, click next. This all looks good. Uh, of course, you can verify everything here. And then once we're happy with all of this, we can click on install. <clears throat> 
Now, of course, the hardware that you you either choose in your VM or the bare metal hardware that you use for your uh, for your backup server will dictate how fast this will go. So at this point, it's just a matter of waiting until this is done. Once it reboots, we'll come up to a terminal screen and then we'll have more information about how to log in. Okay, so here we are a few minutes later and uh, we have rebooted into uh, a terminal window here and we can see that we've got our host name of PVEBK uh, with a login prompt there. And of course we've got a, a URL right above that. It's HTTPS. 192.168.61.8007. Uh, the HTTPS is important, otherwise it just won't work. So uh, let's go ahead and open a, a new tab here. Port 8000, oops, 8007. And then we'll go ahead and say, yeah, that's fine. We're gonna go ahead and click advanced and then proceed. And then we'll do a uh, root and our password and click login. And this is all fine. <clears throat> so uh, if we just take a quick look here, uh, we can see that our CPU usage is, is kind of settling in. So we're bouncing around just a little bit here. Uh, we're using 121 megs of our two gigs of RAM. So I could have brought that way down if I really wanted to, but uh, now we've got some overhead if we ever need it. Uh, our our uh, HD uh, space for root, so our hard drive space. Uh, again, I gave it about 16 gigs. Uh, we're using uh, less than two gigs of that. So we've got lots of space available there if we need it. Uh, of course, so the next thing that we want to do is come over here to uh, storage and disks uh, and then take a look at uh, this drive right here. Uh, we want to initialize that with a GBT, GPT rather. Okay, so now that we've created our uh, our disk here, we've got that set up, or we've initialized it rather, what we're gonna do is head over to a directory. You could use ZFS if you wanted to do that. Uh, we're just gonna use a directory here. You know what, I lied. We used ZFS on our, our Proxmox uh, setup, so let's use a ZFS here. We're gonna create a ZFS. Uh, we're gonna do this. We're gonna give it a name. We're gonna call it backups, like so. <clears throat> Uh, we're gonna add this as a data store. Our RAID level will be single disk. Our compression is on, our A shift is good. We've selected our option here. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and click on OK. So now that we've created our disk here uh, via ZFS, uh, we can see that it's already been added to our backups data store right here. And here we can see that we've got 132 gigs of, of storage and we're using about 25 and a half megs. So now we have set up our backup server uh, on a base level at this point anyway. And so now our next step will actually be to go back over to our Proxmox server and engage with this server to, uh, to initialize our backups. So what we're gonna do is come over here to a, our Proxmox setup here. We're gonna go over here to storage. We're going to add storage. What we're gonna do is actually select Proxmox backup server here at the bottom of the list there. Uh, once we click that, uh, it's going to ask us for an ID. Uh, we're gonna call this uh, PVEBK. Our server uh, will be uh, our IP address over here. So it's gonna be uh, 1.61. Our username will be uh, root at PAM. We're going to add our root password to this. Um, and then our nodes, we can uh, select whichever nodes we'd like. I'm just gonna select that one. We're going to enable it. And then what we're gonna do is actually come, we, the next thing we need is a fingerprint. So we come over here and go to dashboard. We can show the fingerprint and copy it, uh, which is of course, if we come back, we can see right here, show fingerprint uh, under dashboard. So we just click that, click copy, click okay. We're gonna come back over and put this in. And then our data store will be uh, backups. And if everything worked correctly, uh, we can click add and then we can, here we go. Hopefully this will give us uh, this little question mark. The unknown status will go away uh, here in just a moment, hopefully. And there it did. So uh, let's come back in here and edit our backup server. In our backup retention, we can decide to keep all of our backups or we can keep our last three backups or our last however many. We can configure this uh, to basically be set up however we'd like it to be set up as far as retention is concerned. And if we'd like, I'm actually just going to uh, delete that and say, keep all backups. And then our encryption, uh, you can auto-generate auto a client backup or encryption key, use an existing encryption key or not encrypt at all. Again, completely up to you. Uh, because this is my demo server, I'm not going to enable encryption, but you absolutely could. So we'll click okay again, just to make sure that all of that is good. And then what we can do is come over here to backup. We can click on add right here at the top. Our node, of course, will be PVE1. Our storage, we'll come over here and we'll select our PVEBK. That's the backup server that we just configured. Uh, we can set up a schedule for however we'd like to do this. We could say, you know, Monday to Friday um, uh, at, at uh, midnight, or we could do every day uh, at 2.30 and 10.30. Uh, um, I'm just gonna modify this just a little bit. 
Uh, I'm going to say every day at 1030 just by putting in 2230 there. Of course, that's 24 hour time. So 1030 p.m. Uh, and that just makes sure that it's every day. Uh, you can send notifications if you'd like. Uh, you can. Uh, determine how you like uh, notifications to be sent, whether it's notify always or on failure only. Uh, that's how I like to do it. Uh, for the mode, the snapshot mode, you've got some different options here. Uh, I like to uh, fully stop the container uh, because it's at 10.30 at night, it's probably not going to affect me at all. Uh, so I like to stop it, get a full snapshot and then restart the container once uh, that backup or that snapshot backup has been completed. Uh, so we've got enable here and then we can select uh, which of the nodes uh, or which of the, the, the containers inside of here we'd like to back up. Uh, I'm just gonna say my template demo um, because my template, um, you know, I guess for the first one, we should probably do a backup of that as well. We'll click on create. And here we have our backup set up right here now. So what I can actually do just to make sure that everything's working the way we want it to is actually uh, check the box and click run now. Do we want to start the selected uh, backup job now? Yes, I do. So I can come down here and open this up and we can see that it is currently uh, running. Let's jump back over to here and see if uh, we're getting any information over here. Uh, our, our CPU usage has spiked, our RAM usage has spiked. Uh, so we can definitely tell that this is working. So here in a few minutes, this will be done and we can take a look at our backups. If you'd like to get early access to my content, you can head over to Patreon, become a channel member here on YouTube, or head over to dbtech.fans. And any of those ways will help support the channel and give you early access to ad-free content. All right, so it looks like after just a couple of minutes that has completed. So now if we come back over here and go to backups, here we can see uh, that we definitely did have uh, some, some transfer going on there. Of course, that wasn't much because it's a brand new container with really nothing in it. But if we come over here to content, uh, here we can see our two containers in the root namespace uh, and we can open these up and get uh, exact dates and times of when these were backed up. We can open this up further and get the uh, the files that are in there uh, as well as the actual file sizes. And if we wanted to, what I absolutely love about this is we could say, well, let's see, our, our template is uh, number 100 as far as our container name is concerned. So if we take a look right here is container 100. And of course, this is the backup and all of the relevant information for that. So I wanna make sure that uh, this doesn't get overwritten or deleted accidentally. So I'm gonna change the protection there just by clicking on the little shield right there. And I'm gonna say that's protected and I'm gonna click okay. And then what I wanna do is add a note to that. You don't have to add a note, but I like to add a note. So we're gonna say, uh, this is the initial backup of the uh, container, just like so and click OK. And that's it. We have uh, set up a backup server, of course, in a VM. Again, like I said, you could put this on bare metal if you wanted to. Uh, we have actually gone back to our Proxmox server and configured it to communicate with the backup server and actually have run a backup. We've also set up a schedule so that it will run at 1030 every night so that we'll have uh, daily backups of our servers. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, it would mean a lot to me. If you give the video a thumbs up, it really does help the channel quite a bit. Uh, there are, of course, I'll have links to everything in the description that you might need for this. I guess really for this one, it's just going to be uh, a link to the Proxmox website. So that'll be down there. Of course, while you're down there, there will be other ways you can support the channel as well, whether it's through channel memberships, or uh, if you wanted to, you could support the channel via uh, Patreon or my dbtech.fan site, either of those. In fact, all three of those will give you early access to ad-free content uh, here on the channel. So uh, of course, none of that's uh, required. You can just watch the videos when they come out uh, for everybody else. But I think with all of that said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. So as always, thanks for your time and I will talk to you in the next video.